My name is Diane Munno. I am the advisor for the Science National Honor Society here at the West Isop High School. Welcome this evening. I wish to welcome Board of Education President, Mr. Geller, Superintendent of Schools, Mrs. Burns, Assistant Superintendent of Schools, Mrs. Morrison, Superintendent of Personnel, Mr. Taylor, Principal of the High School, Dr. Bridgman, Director of Science, Technology, and Engineering, Mrs. Langone. The teachers, our physics teachers, Mr. Dixon, Ms. Crimi. Chemistry teachers, Mrs. Morana, Mrs. Scrovani, Ms. Tong, Ms. Pacone, Ms. Feruzzi. Biology teachers, Mr. Haldewang, Mrs. Mulroy, Mrs. Altschuler, Mrs. Gordani, Ms. Scorsia. Earth science teachers, Mrs. Winter, Ms. Seppi, Mr. Holzman, Mr. Vitti, Ms. Muschetta, Mrs. Larson, Ms. Mr. Ruggiero, Mr. Shelley, Ms. Wallace. Research teachers, Mrs. Kroll and Mr. Rapsick. Parents, family members, and inductees. The Science National Honor Society Chapter 1614 is pleased to be able to present this induction virtually. The induction ceremony was set to take place May 20th, 2020, but the schools were closed. Our officers from the 2019-2020 school year have entered into a new phase of their lives in the semi-real world of college life. Tonight, we will have them give their speeches, which they recorded in May of 2020. In addition, we have speeches that were prepared from a board member and some administrators. Our guest scientist has also recorded a virtual speech. I would like to present to you the president of the Board of Education, Mr. Geller, followed by superintendent of schools, Mrs. Burns, then Dr. Bridgman, the principal of the high school, and lastly, Mrs. Debbie Langone, director of science, technology, and engineering here at West Islip. Hello everyone. It's always my honor to represent the West Islip Board of Education at Honor Society Inductions, but I'm also an electrical engineer, so recognizing young scientists is very special to me. I'm delighted that you're all interested in the study of science because it is the unending search for truth, and the study of it will eventually answer all our questions about our physical world. Even if you ultimately choose a career path outside of science, the scientific method you've learned here as students will serve you well throughout your lives. The great work ethic you've demonstrated in being inducted into the National Science Honor Society will also benefit you throughout your lives, and I urge you to continue to challenge yourselves and strive for greatness in everything you do. Congratulations and thank you. Hello, I am Superintendent of Schools Bernadette Burns and it gives me great pleasure to have this opportunity to acknowledge all the inductees to the National Science Honor Society. I am disappointed that we cannot celebrate your achievement in person, but it does not lessen how proud I am of you. The National Science Honor Society recognizes students who have demonstrated excellence in encouraging and engaging in scientific and intellectual thought, a concept critical to the future of our nation which has always been at the forefront of scientific discovery. Throughout history, advances in science have accelerated human progress. Science helps us to understand the world around us. It teaches us to think, ask questions, collect information, apply what we have learned. According to the National Science Foundation, the United States is the global leader in science and technology. However, the U.S. global share of science and technology activities is declining as other nations continue to rise. Your induction into this illustrious society brings you one step closer to making real contributions to our world and nation, which is desperate for a group of young thinkers who will be the future of industry, research, and scientific exploration. I applaud you for this honor, and on behalf of the entire West Islip faculty and staff, I am very proud of you. Congratulations. Good evening, everyone. It gives me pleasure to say congratulations to all our inductees this evening to the National Science Honor Society, West Islip High School. Congratulations to you. We know that you have worked very hard. I've seen your work in different research program, in physics, in chemistry, in earth science. You, your teachers have been there to help you, to guide you along. You have taken advantage of everything that we have had to offer here at West Islip. I'm very proud of you. So you have excelled in scholarship, in great character, in community service. 
spread our flag well, continue to work hard and become great scientists out there. Congratulations again. I am Debbie Langone, Director of Science and Engineering Technology. I feel that it is extremely important to encourage and recognize high school students' achievement in science. We are currently faced with many worldwide challenges that need solutions. The students being recognized today hold the hope within them for our future. In addition to their academic achievements in science, their character emulates those who have profoundly impacted society in positive ways. It is with great pleasure to extend my congratulations to all of the students being honored. To maintain our national standing, numerous rules and regulations must be adhered to, which will be explained to you by the 2019-2020 officers of the Science National Honor Society. Officers who will be presenting this evening are past president Jake Turcos, vice president Grace Gallagher, secretary Anna Rents, treasurer Dia Zeme, historian Alexandra Quetel. Jake Corso will speak about the objectives of the West Islip Science National Honor Society. Good evening. My name is Jake Tercios, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to this year's Science National Honor Society induction. The objectives of the Science National Honor Society are to encourage and recognize scientific and intellectual thought, to advance students' knowledge of science, to aid the community in its comprehension of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, to encourage students to participate in community service, and in turn, to encourage dedication to the pursuit of scientific knowledge. Now I would like to introduce Vice President Grace Gallagher. Grace was the valedictorian of the class of 2020 and delivered a fantastic speech at our graduation. Vice President Grace Gallagher will speak about member qualifications. All the students on this stage tonight have met very rigorous requirements in order to be eligible for induction as a provisional charter member of the Science National Honor Society. The qualifications they have met are as follow. They are all in either their junior or senior year of high school. They all have a 90 or above average in their science classes and must maintain said average throughout their time in this honor society. They are all enrolled in either a lab science class or the science research class from freshman to senior year. They all must uphold the disciplinary and character ideals of both this honor society and West Islip High School. Remaining a student of good standing is vital. A minimum of 10 hours of science-related community service must be completed by all members each year. These listed qualifications have been pledged to be met by all of the inductees. In order for all of the students on the stage to remain a provisional charter member of the Science National Honor Society, all of these qualifications must be upheld and adhered to from here on out. Becoming a provisional member allows the students on the stage to be a part of Science National Honor Society on the condition that they fulfill all requirements for full membership. Now, our historian Alessandra Questel and Secretary Anna Rents will talk about inductee expectations and scientific community service requirements. Hello, my name is Alessandra Costell and I am the Public Relations Officer for the first chapter of the Science National Honor Society. Our new Science National Honor Society has just started to branch out into the West Islip community. Our first community service experience as a National Honor Society involved assisting research students and teachers in the middle school. Unfortunately, due to the coronavirus, our current students weren't able to assist the research students and teachers at the high school for the research symposium. But thank you to our advisor, Ms. Munno, who gave us the link to access the symposium. Current students were able to observe all the experiments that the research students conducted and obtain some science community service hours as well. Our new inductees will be expected to assist in similar events in the following school year. And are required to complete a total of 10 science community service hours. We are very excited about the opportunity next year to work hands-on in the elementary schools, aiding the students through the entire research process. We expect our new inductees to help the students brainstorm research problems, pose questions, and create hypotheses while also carrying out the research tasks. All of this work will be displayed at the elementary school science fairs that the new inductees will volunteer at with setup and cleanup. We hope to continue to impact the community by starting STEM nights using our high school planetarium and science nights for the elementary school and middle school children to spark their interest in science at a younger age.
Hi, my name is Anna Rems and I was the Secretary of the Science National Honor Society this year. I'm excited to announce the newly elected officers for this upcoming school year. All students had to apply for these positions and were elected in June of 2020. Firstly, we have our new Science National Honor Society President, Olivia Weiss, our new Vice President, John Benedetto, our Secretary, Antonia Lafamina, our Treasurer, Jenna Ostrov, and finally, our Public Relations Historian, Brett Powell. Once inducted, members entering as seniors next year can apply for the various positions within the Science National Honor Society. All new officers will need to do two 10-minute presentations based on a science topic of their interest. We are excited for the future of the Science National Honor Society and optimistic about its impact on our community. Now our Secretary Dezami will introduce our honor scientist to deliver a speech. I would now like to introduce master teacher, Mr. Brian Haldenwang. Mr. Haldenwang earned his Bachelor's of Science in Biology from Stony Brook University and Master's of Science in Education from Dowling College. He has been teaching for 15 years at West Isop High School, where he currently teaches International Baccalaureate Higher Level Biology and Human Anatomy and Physiology. Before teaching, Mr. Haldenwang worked as a biochemist with the Enteric Products Incorporated, where he did research on H. pylori infection. He serves as the IB Extended Essay Coordinator, as well as the Students Acting for the Environment Advisor. Mr. Haldenwang is an active member of the Science Teachers Association of New York, IB Educators Network, and is an educational ambassador for the Half Earth Project. He is responsible for handling the planning of the annual Day in the Life of a River Project, and serves as the Pasco Scientific Liaison for the West Islip Science Department. Annually, Mr. Haldenwang attends and contributes to IB Roundtable meetings for biology and extended essay to stay current with the best pedagogical practices and curriculum changes, and he holds a position as the external examiner for the International Baccalaureate Organization. Once again, allow me to introduce Mr. Haldenwang. Good evening, everyone. I want to thank you so much for inviting me to speak here tonight. I've been jokingly entitled my speech Four Score and Seven Masks Ago. And while we may not all agree on the humor, we can all agree that we are living in some interesting times. We may even be tired of hearing that phrase, these are interesting times. But it is the truth, and the truth is what I would like to talk to you about tonight. Pursuit of the truth has been the driving factor of why I chose a career in science. Science aims to find the cause for the effect, the truth behind the observation. It has been one of my life's passions to try to find the why behind what I've seen and experienced. My love of science began at a young age and was inspired by a teacher. And while many of you at this moment are thinking back to your favorite science teacher here at the high school, or maybe even back to your middle school who inspired you, the spark that ignited my love of science came from my kindergarten teacher. The experiment was simple. Take a beaker of water, put it on a bookshelf, and see what happens to the water each week. I watched that beaker every day, every week, as water began to slowly disappear and evaporate. To you, at this point in your life, evaporation is a scientific truth. It's a law. You've studied why it works and you've studied how it works. But to a kindergartner, that's magic. Where did that water go? Can we get it back? Why did it just disappear? All these questions filled my mind as I looked at that beaker during every lesson, every day in kindergarten. From that point on, I was obsessed. Birthday presents, were microscopes and chemistry sets. Discussions at home were focused on science, discovery, and exploration. Watched as many science shows as I could. I've read as many scientific articles as I could. I needed to know how and why things happened. I needed to know the truth. That desire to know more, to discover truth, led me to focus on a career in science. It led me to fall in love with biology when I walked into a 10th grade biology class here at the high school taught by none other than your Honor Society advisor, Mrs. Munno. And just as a side note, it was my favorite class in high school. It led me to push my guidance counselor to allow me to take AP Biology in 12th grade when they wanted me to take physics instead. It led me to pursue a career in biology in college at the State University of Stony Brook at New York with a focus on biotechnology. It led me to my first job as a biochemist at a company that was working on H. pylori infection and diagnosis in humans. And it eventually led me to science education, where it was my desire to foster and pass on my excitement for discovery to other people. I'm sure at some point in your life, you have all felt this drive to discover the truth 
and it may be even the driving factor that led you here tonight. Let that drive take control. Search out the truth. Don't let anyone or anything stand in your way. Know that failure may happen along the way, and it may happen often, but you have to keep getting back up. That's what counts. If an experiment fails, redesign it, repeat it. Some of the best discoveries have, been, have, have happened due to failure. Some of the best discoveries have happened by accident, while scientists try to uncover different truths. Where would we be today had Alexander Fleming not accidentally discovered penicillin in a dirty Petri dish? Where would we be today had Percy Spencer not accidentally melted a chocolate bar in front of a magnetron tube and discovered microwaves? Where would we be today had Charles Goodyear not accidentally dropped rubber on a stove and discovered the process of vulcanization? History is replete with examples of discovery by accident, discoveries that happened because scientists were looking for truth and discovered other truths. Truth is out there, just waiting for someone to find it. We just need to stay on the path of discovery, and those truths will make themselves known. We like to say that we're living in a world where science and discovery is under attack, that truth itself is under attack. The reality is, is that this isn't new. Science and discovery have been under attack for centuries. Every generation has and will continue to face that same opposition. Darwin faced it in the 1800s when he proposed natural selection. Avogadro faced it in the 1700s when he proposed his hypothesis on volume and gas laws. Copernicus faced it in the 1500s when he proposed a heliocentric model of our solar system. While science is constantly under scrutiny and truth is constantly under scrutiny, we must and will press on to find the answers we seek. We need your bright minds to make those discoveries that need to be made, to find the truths that need to be found. That's the essence of science. The famous astronomer and physicist Galileo once said, all truths are easy to understand once they've been discovered. The point is to discover them. This is the charge I leave to you tonight. Make those discoveries, find those truths. Congratulations on your induction into the West Islip chapter of the National Science Honor Society. You've all shown that you are dedicated, driven, and inquisitive. Let your motivation to discover truth, to find the solutions to problems, and the willingness to learn be the factors that guide you on your personal journey as scientists. We are so proud of you. We know you accomplish great things, and we look forward to hearing about your future endeavors. Make West Islip proud, and have a great night. Now we will share the scientific light. The executive board of the 2020-2021 school year will present the provisional charter members of the Science National Honor Society. The executive board will present in the following order. Olivia Vice, President, J.R. De Benedetto, Vice President, Antonia Lafemina, Secretary, Gia Gianna Ostgrove, Treasurer, and Brett Powell, Public Relations Historian. Throughout this year, club members gave a lecture about a topic of interest. We had the opportunity to share our interest as well as teach our peers, so we were able to learn from each other. Vice President Grace Gallagher gave an informative lecture on the effect of the FTO gene on obesity. Treasurer Dea Zymi's lecture titled How Quorum Sensing Worked focused on the behaviors of cell populations. Secretary Anna Rentz shared the results of her research in her lecture assessing the contaminants in bottled versus tap water. Member Dorian Scortos explained the origin of the many worlds theory in his lecture. Members Evan Lamb and Brett Powell presented a proposal on elemental composition of e-cigarette juice and aerosol using synchrotron analysis. Our president, Jake Tercio, shared a lecture on difference between four-stroke combustion engines and rotary engines. Public relations slash historian Alessandra Questel presented a lecture on cystic fibrosis and the drugs used to treat it. Member Tristan Tran gave a lecture on the science behind nuclear weapons. Together, we shared scientific light throughout our lectures on various subjects, and now we get to share that light with our new inductees. As each new member receives a glow stick, it symbolizes the new light that they will be able to share with their peers.
not only through a lecture, but by being an active member of this society and contributing their own ideas. We welcome our new inductees to share what interests them in order to grow as a group and keep on glowing. Hi, my name is Olivia Weiss, and I'm the president of Science Honor Society. Here are seven of the 31 new inductees. John Bonneberger, Annie Chambers, Lily Colonna, Sophia Crudelli, Carly DiCato, Jonathan Delanoy, Max Esposito. Hi, I'm John DiBenedetto, Vice President of the Science National Honor Society. And here are the next six inductees for this year. Sarah Gargano, Giovanna Jenna, Leah Gilmore, Hope Gustafson, Brooke Haley, and Timothy Hanschel. Hi, my name is Antonia LaFamina and I'm this year's secretary of the Science National Honor Society. I'll be presenting six out of the 31 inductees for this year. Emma Higgins, Juliana Katarski, Kaden Krewer, Valentina Leone, Mia McCandless, Ada Mueller. Hi, my name is Brett Powell, and I'm this year's public relations and historian for the Science National Honor Society. These are six of the 31 new inductees. Jenna Ostrove, Paisley Nara, Kirsten Nyzen, Mark Pergin, Joseph Pierpato, and Michael Rabin. Hello, my name is Jenna Ostrove, and I'm the treasurer for the 2020-2021 year of Science National Honor Society. Here are six of the inductees for this year. Kayla Soares, Emma Scalza, Anthony Shaw, McKenna Smith, Aaron Thaxter, and Brooke Tyler. We now invite you to illuminate the scientific light you have within you as you become a member of the Science National Honor Society, Chapter 1614. Use your light to guide you to scientific heights. To all of you in attendance, thank you for joining the Science National Honor Society this evening for our virtual event.